Hello, this is Nima Golbabai on KUCI 88.9 Irvine. We're starting off Cine Show today with a movie I've been actually looking to watch for many years. Uh, and that movie is Thelma and Louise. And let's get started by opening the IMDb page before I go any further. IMDb, Thelma, and Louise. Okay. Let's go. Alright, so it is rated a 7.6 out of 10 on IMDb. I'd say that's pretty fair. I'd say maybe it's a bit more than that, but that's about it. I'd give it a, uh, let's say, I'd give it like an 8.9 out of 10 and 89%. It's very good. I enjoy it very much. It is directed by Ridley Scott, who is famous for Alien, Gladiator, Blade Runner, The Martian, which I haven't seen, but he is famous for it, and this movie is also famous for it. He recently made the movie Napoleon, which wasn't received all that warmly by people. It has a 6.4 on IMDb. A lot of people criticized it for, I think it's kind of like bogus historically, but it's also, I, I guess that's not the main reason people don't like it. I think it's somewhat disrespectful to like him as a character. Like I guess he's not treated with the most respect. But, you know, every director has his out of touch phase. Ridley's probably in that phase right now. Um, the movie Thelma and Louise stars Susan Sarandon, Gina Davis, Harvey Keitel, Michael Madsen, Christopher McDonald, who I don't know, but I'm gonna look at him quickly, see. Um, yeah, I don't know him, but he plays a character too. Um, Steven Tablowski, don't know him. Brad Pitt, everybody knows Brad Pitt. And that's basically all the main cast here. Um, the movie focuses around, as the name would suggest, the two main characters, Thelma and Louise, who are sort of like uh, good friends who are on a trip together that goes horribly wrong when in somewhat self-defense, but kind of not, um, Louise, who's the more sort of tough of the two, um, shoots a man who is, uh, attacking her friend, Thelma, and they basically flee their city to evade the law. And this is when Harvey Keitel's character, Hall, who's the cop, is sort of put on their case. And they're trying to leave. And the constant theme throughout the movie is Thelma's kind of like, uh, like kind of like a ditz. Like she keeps making mistakes and making their capture sort of more and more likely. And she keeps doing dumb stuff. And Louise, like I said, is the more tough of the two characters, and she's kind of like mad at her, but also she likes her, so it's not like she's gonna like abandon her or whatever. Um, also, Michael Madsen, who is definitely one of my favorite actors, I think, um, plays Jimmy, who is Louise's like boyfriend but they're also like close to getting married and he's sort of in this situation where Louise is running away and he is being left out in, in the dust and he tracks them down and basically meets up with them where he basically gives uh, his blessing for her to go even though he pr proposes to her and she's like no I can't and yeah the, the road trip continues that's what I'll say it is like a road trip movie but it's also like a fugitive movie and I thought that was the coolest thing about the movie it to me it's it's a very American film because it's like the power of the car and the road trip 
and it has all these wonderful shots of like various states um i don't know what the word is it's not geography is it like topography you know like the landscape that's what i mean it's got really nice landscape shots of all these different places in america and it it's very beautiful really well shot that's another thing I should say. The direction is awesome in this movie. It's very perfectly directed. Not perfect, sorry, but very greatly. There are a few mistakes that I was surprised to see from a guy like Ridley. Like, there were continuity mistakes. Like, for instance, uh, some of the jump cuts were weird and they, like, didn't work. Like, it was strange and then there was continuity mistakes such as there was one scene where she walked in the building and it wasn't raining and it was somewhat day and then it's in just the next scene but it's like literally like probably two minutes later it's dark and it's raining and you can tell they just shot the scene a bunch of times and they didn't work out the continuity right so it was a little jarring so there were mistakes like that uh, so it's definitely not perfect in terms of direction but it's really really great um, I would say the heart of the movie is the friendship and relationship between Thelma and Louise it's very natural you believe they are friends you don't question it um, both actresses are really good in the role and they're both like really likable strong um sort of what's another word i can think of they're like they're like fun characters i guess um and you're rooting for them to escape so that's good um let's see here so where was i left off uh, okay, so she gets the blessing to go, and then basically what happens is Brad Pitt's character gets introduced, who's like, he's playing like a, a cowboyish kind of guy. He's not actually a cowboy, but he's like a southerner wearing a cowboy hat. He's kind of like a, a poor kid, and he wants to tag along with them, and he seems like a nice guy, and he plays really well. Uh, but then it turns out he robs... Uh, Thelma and that goes back to the fact that like Thelma's like screwing up the whole the whole plan to escape they get all their money stolen and it's because of Thelma and yeah so they're in a bad position they continue going they're in the Grand Canyon where a cop stops them and basically it's a really really well done scene both in terms of like the suspense but also just like the beauty it's a really nice um sort of filming location and all that and so louise is pulled out by the cop and says can you go wait in my car and he's questioning her and it's clear that the cop has been told like by the cops in Arkansas that like we have two girls who are fugitives they're running from the law they want to go to Mexico and it's clear that like the gig is up but then Thelma comes out with the gun and this is like uh, Thelma's biggest strongest moment because up until then she's like a timid character but then she's pointing the, the gun at the cop and they basically lock him in the trunk and shoot some air holes in there so he can breathe and then they run off but the movie ends with them sort of surrounded uh, it's all over but it's been a great journey and it's a really cool scene and I won't spoil it but it's just an awesome like on the road American semi-action movie but like um what is it classified as here in terms of genre adventure yeah it is like an adventure film that's exactly what it is it's so imdb says it's adventure crime and drama that's basically what it is um but there's some cool action scenes like there's this one scene where they blow up a gas tanker and it's both really funny and really cool 
Um, but yeah, fantastic adventure movie. That's a great way to put it. Um, let's read some reviews here. Uh, where do I get the reviews? Because, you know, I like to read reviews to sort of help my thinking because I'm not able to sort of do it alone sometimes. Let's get a nice medium sized review. Um, let's see here. Okay, this guy gives it a 8 out of 10. That's a pretty good place to start, but Okay, this I'll read an 8 out of 10 and a 9 out of 10. So I'll read the 8 first. So I'm reading it now. This is from Dennis Luttrell. Review from almost 20 years ago. This is an important film aimed at blue-collar women who feel victimized by both society and the men in their lives. Directed by Ridley Scott, who directed science fiction classics such as Alien and Blade Runner. Thelma and Louise is an on on the I don't know what that's that says, but okay. It's a chick flick with chase scenes. A kind of femme butch Cassidy in the Sundance Kid. Somewhat akin to Wild at Heart and Natural Born Killers, but without the gratuitous violence of those films. Ridley Scott walks the rage, razor edge between uh, femme exploitation and serious social commentary. Incidentally, the script is by Kelly Kuri, who wrote Talk About and Divine Secrets of the Yaya Sisterhood, which should give you an idea about how men are depicted here. Susan Sarandon is Louise, a 30-something Arkansas waitress with, with an attitude and some emotional baggage. Gina Davis is Thelma, a cloistered, in, ingenuine housewife with a yearning to breathe free. Both do an outstanding job and carry the film from beginning to end. The characters they play are well-rounded, fully developed, and sympathetic. In, in contrast, the men mainly play uh, cliches, or in the case of Daryl, Thelma's boorish husband, or the troll truck driver, burlesques. I've never seen Gina Davis better. Okay, I'd like to actually pause the review for a second. I I wouldn't say all the men play stereotypes. I think it's actually quite balanced in terms of like the depiction of men and women. Um, uh, I would say the truck driver is definitely like a massive like blowhard loser. It's like he's depict depicted really bad. But I think I mean, everyone else in the movie is sort of. I would say the men are depicted somewhat. I don't they're still like strong and everything um, in fact I would say Michael Madsen's character is quite sympathetic as well Brad Pitt's character is obviously he's a he's a thief he takes all their money but that doesn't really have anything to do with being a man so I, I wouldn't say that all the men play stereotypes but the truck driver yeah he's like a, but he's like comic relief he, it's not really it's it's well balanced I've never seen Gina Davis better. Her unique style is melded very well into a native woman who has never had a chance to express herself, but goes hog wild and seems natural at it when the time comes. Sarandon is also at the top of her game and plays the curtsy, world-wise, vulnerable Louise with tenderness and understanding. Note, by the way, her pinned-up-in-the-back hairstyle is direct directed Directly lifted from TV's Polly Holiday. Okay, that's sort of irrelevant, so I'll keep going. Harvey Keitel plays the almost sympathetic cop. And Brad Pitt appears as JD, a sweet talk talking 20-something who gives Thelma the script for robbing 7-Elevens as he steals more than her libido. This movie works because it's funny and sad and sad by turns and expresses the yearning we all have to be free of the restraints of society and institutions symbolized in the wide open spaces of the American Southwest okay that's a good point so I'll pause the, the review again it is like 
that is it is the perfect spot to do like one of these uh, sort of on the run movies just like the massive open spaces in America and like the little tiny towns or the gas stations by the side of the road and you like pick up people along the way and everybody's different it's really cool I really really like this sort of movie it's it is kind of gives you a feeling of freedom I enjoyed that part very much all right continuing the review while representing the on again off again incompatibility of the male and female heart I, I would say that that's true uh, so he says again the male bashing is done with a touch of humor I wouldn't say it's a male bashing I, I, I really don't think that but I guess this person felt that uh, with a touch of humor and the targets are richly deserving of what they get the truck driver yeah but and the guy at the beginning yeah but not the other male characters the ending is perhaps too theatrical and frankly unrealistic but opinions may differ best and most telling scene is when Thelma phones Daryl who which is her husband to see if he has found out about their escapades weasel like He's trying to help the cops locate them, but he is so transparent to her that all she has to do is hear his voice, and she says he knows. She says to Luis and hangs up. The best visual is when the black police helicopter appears suddenly and then menacingly like a giant fly beneath the horizon of the Grand Canyon. Also excellent were those squad cars lined up like armored battalions aimed at the girls on the run. I also liked the scene at the motel with JD and Louise's boyfriend. Um, they were beautifully directed and cut and well con conveyed by Sarandon Davis, depicting two stages in male female relationships. See this for Gina Davis because she was brilliant, vividly alive, and never looked better. Okay, that's the end of the review. All right, first, let's start with the um okay she says or he or she i guess oh his name's dennis so it's a he uh the he says the best visual is the black helicopter that appears suddenly out of the horizon of the grand canyon yeah, that was really cool it was really well done it was almost like something from like once again like i say like an action movie it was kind of cool that way and then, yep, all the cars in the Ga Grand Canyon that have sort of cornered the two women was really cool. So I think there was some really strong direction in this film, no doubt. If you like that, you should watch this movie. Um, yeah, and then the scenes at the motel were cool because they were, like, cutting back and forth between Louise with her, like, boyfriend, but, like, kind of, it's almost like her husband. And then between Thelma and JD played by Brad Pitt who is like much younger and they're obviously more like in a flingy sort of relationship um so it was cool it was like really well directed but also it was like meaningful and whatnot and then the guy ends by saying see this Regina Davis she was brilliant vividly alive and never looked better yeah she was really good she was quite strong. I don't know who I liked better out of Thelma and Louise. I may have to watch it again. I guess Louise is probably... Louise being Susan Sarandon's character, which is the stronger of the two, was probably more memorable than Thelma. But I guess Thelma... I don't know. I guess he felt sorry for her more, so maybe you connect with her a bit more um all right but let's go to that nine out of ten review um one second here uh, all right found it so this person is named dave so Dave gave it a 9 out of 10. Um, let's read why. 
Thelma and Louise is a rarity. It is a buddy movie about two women, and it is one of the best road movies to ever grace the screen. Alright, yeah, I agree with that. I think it is an amazing road movie, and it is like one of those buddy kind of buddy cop movies, but it is with women, which is different. And it's obviously not about cops. Alright, Louise, played by Susan Sarandon and Thelma, Gina Davis, are two friends who plan a road trip into the mountains for a weekend. Neither one of them lives seeming excited at the moment. Wait. Oh, neither one of their lives seems exciting at the moment. Louise waits tables and is also waiting on her boyfriend, Jimmy, who is always traveling and seems destined to never settle down. Thelma is a repressed housewife who lives at home with a self-important husband, Daryl, who doesn't seem to care much about her except when she's not fulfilling her housewife duties, like having the dinner made or having the house clean. It is no wonder why these two decide to take a trip for the weekend to the mountains to get away and have some fun. Of course there is an event that happens not long after they started their journey. Right after this, and this, of course, I'm cutting in here, is when Thelma gets attacked by the man that I talked about at the beginning, and then Louise sort of, um, in semi-self-defense, shoots the man. It wasn't really necessary, but she kind of shoots him out of anger, but he was attacking her. Uh, Things spiral out of control as the two girls find themselves racing to Mexico with the law quickly on their heels. This movie could have been another boring road movie. But both Gina Davis and Susan Sarandon, along with a fine script and clever pacing by the director Ridley Scott, make it much better. Davis and Sarandon have great chemistry together. And the script is loaded with offbeat humor to go along with its clever story. The movie is never boring because Ridley Scott makes it, makes it so by slowing the pace down at the right moments and picking it up back when necessary. I enjoyed all the characters, including the minor ones, including a cameo by Brad Pitt as the young hitchhiker, J.D., who Thelma quickly falls in love with. Some people may see this as the ultimate female picture, but I think it's more than that. Harvey Keitel is the inspector on the case who believes that these girls really aren't as bad as some may think. His character is interesting because he seems to understand why everything involving the girls has led up to this series of unfortunate events. Michael Madsen, as Louise's boyfriend, also adds depth to his role as a man who, though upset with Luis, is going to do... Hold on, sorry. This, I think he, this guy made a typo. Though upset with what Luis is going to do, but understands and loves her still. These two characters add something more to the story, which makes it less of a feminist picture without once taking away from the two leads. If that was even possible. My only gripe is that the with the movie could be the ending. Not the way it ended, but how quickly it rushed to the end credits. I, for one, like Roger Ebert, who has said the same thing in his review of the movie, believe that the ending should have lasted a little longer before fading out. That's my only problem. And the only reason why this movie get, doesn't get a perfect score from me. Before I talk about his review, I'm going to see what Roger Ebert gave this movie. Let's see... Okay, he gave it he gave it a three and a half out of four stars. I would say it deserves the full four stars, but so he still liked it though. Um, where to begin with this guy's review though? He made a lot of good points. Um, yeah, a lot of like that beginning details about how both of them are sort of not in an ideal place in their life and they have like boring lives maybe sort of sets up that reason why they sort of don't go to the cops at the beginning although like yeah it wasn't technical self-defense so they may have a difficult time proving it so all that but it all sort of comes together 
Uh, he talks about the chemistry between the two actresses, which is like so important for any movie, but especially a movie where you're trying to like sell, you know, only two people and like they're almost the entire focus of the movie and they're like friends, you gotta believe it or else it doesn't work. Um, okay, so, sorry, I'm just picking up. Um, he says, it's loaded with offbeat humor, yep, very funny movie, great pace, I agree. Uh, and then he says something that he enjoyed the minor characters. I really do think that, too. I really enjoyed the minor characters, too. I thought Brad Pitt was awesome, and I liked seeing him play a Southerner, which I guess he actually is. He's from Oklahoma, but I feel like people don't even... They don't... Sometimes people don't think those states are really part of the South, like Texas, Oklahoma... But I guess it's in the historical south of the United States. Uh, so yeah, I loved Brad Pitt's character. And it was fun to watch Thelma, uh, like, sort of lust after him. Um, then he talks about Harvey Keitel, who is awesome. Another one of my favorite actors. I thought he was really cool. And I did like that he was sort of empathetic and he may have understood what they were going through and was doing his best to like diffuse the situation which of course doesn't work out but it makes the ending more impactful his reaction to uh sort of their action which once again i don't want to spoil it uh uh let's see Yep, Michael Madsen, he says he had stepped to his role as a man that is upset with what Luis is going to do, but loves her still. And yeah, I, I would not call this a feminist picture as this guy puts it. Um, it's not a feminist movie, I wouldn't say. It's just, it's more like an uh, American road trip film. It really has, it has like almost no politics in it at all i mean there's like subtext of um like sort of women's struggles but it's not um the movie doesn't teach a political lesson at all so it's not like pushy in any way and yeah it was like really like i said well balanced it's not like one specific group being men was like put down and another group was put up like women it was all well balanced and all the characters were likable the women the men uh, <laughs> whatever in between <laughs> um, yeah so he says other than that he says his only gripe is the ending he says he didn't like how it was rushed to the end credits and that was the only reason it didn't get a perfect score yeah, I think he did a really nice review. It's a, it's definitely, I would probably have to watch it again. I'm not sure if I would say it's very good or great. It's sort of in the middle for me right now. I really liked it. Um, but yeah, I think we can move on to another movie I saw that was sort of strange. But uh, I did see it. So maybe I should go along with it. It was the movie Wanted. So I'll bring that up. Wanted is from 2008. Uh, it stars Angelina Jolie. It's rated a 6.7 out of 10. Uh, Angelina Jolie, James McAvoy, Morgan Freeman, and some other people. I would say this movie is it's pretty good. It's got good action, I would say. It is very overdone. Lots of like early CGI action. It's not it's definitely like trying to be like the Matrix, but it's not nearly as well directed or sort of 
really cool with the action but it is definitely trying to be like that um, it's entertaining it's got good acting Angelina Jolie is really good in this Morgan Freeman is really good James McAvoy it was good but I've never been a big fan of him as an actor I don't it's not like I don't like him but he's not like the most special actor in the world but it's a strange st story this movie so basically what happens is um, it's a little bit complicated but there's this secret society of assassins who are like superheroes almost um, and basically one of these super assassin people gets assassinated on a rooftop in like a really pretty pretty cool scene and then as it turns out it's the son of James McAvoy's character and they track him down and they're like oh your dad died because he never knew his dad and all that and um, they basically, this guy has like a genetic ability to have like some superhuman killing ability. I'm not exactly remembering what it was, but it's kind of like he can like slow down time and fight really good, you know. Uh, so they contract him and they train him and all that. And that's some of the best parts of the movie, the training parts to see him like go into a really honed killer and he basically goes to avenge his father's death and this is when they introduce the during the training the whole like organization it's a very strange uh, idea it was unique it's basically like it's an ancient order that's based on this loom as in like textile loom that's always working and the loom uh prints not prints but knits a fabric and within the fabric there's a decipherable language that tells what the target is going to be so they're basically like honorable assassins they like do the duty of this like supernatural object that tells them who to kill and then it sort of expands on this Angelina Jolie's character says like one time she refused the looms order and like bad stuff started to happen and she could tell that like the loom is sort of like keeps the world in order um, but back to James McAvoy's training. There's a lot of good scenes where he's really honing his abilities. They're fun to watch. Um, he gets beat up a lot, which is fun to see. Uh, <sighs> sorry. A bit of a yawn there. But then he's like finally ready to go out and start looking for his father. But then, uh, uh, no, sorry, he's not ready yet. But after he's trained, he goes on a few missions. And then I think his father seems to be, or sorry, not his father, but the guy who killed his father is, like, hunting him down and all that. But then he sort of gets into an altercation where the guy doesn't kill him. So this is a bit confusing. Uh, so they determined they got to find this guy and eliminate him so i think they're in europe or something where he is and they're on a train ride and he meets the guy and he's about to kill him but the man actually he's like dangling from the broken train that's i think been derailed and he's over a cliff and the guy that's supposed to kill him actually saves him. And as it turns out, that was his father. 
and the organization has betrayed him and tricked him into killing his own father, which he does, because he doesn't think it's his father. And they do it because he's the only one that has the ability to. And, uh, yeah, so this obviously changes the revenge arc. It's a decent twist. It's not built up enough. Like, it's not like the usual suspects where it's like, oh my god, all the clues come together. You know, it's insane. It wasn't like a twist like that, but it was a twist. It's not top tier, but it was a twist. Uh, so then he turns his sights on the organization. Uh, and basically, he disappears. This is the part of the movie that kind of doesn't make sense. Like, he seems to be a little too safe. Like, he doesn't seem to be being hunted as hard as he was in the beginning. But, uh, yeah, he basically infiltrates their, their compound, and he's, like, the big man now, and he's got all the training, and he's angry. Uh... And yeah, he goes out there and destroys everybody. Uh, and before this, I should say, he's actually does some investigating and he, he realizes that Morgan Freeman's character, Sloan, who heads the organization, is actually corrupt. He's not following what the loom is saying in terms of targets. Um, he's actually making his own fake targets and giving them out to the assassins for profit. However, back to when he's like defeated everybody and he's got Morgan Freeman, Angelina Jolie in a room, all the people, all the assassins. Morgan Freeman's character says like in defense of himself because James McAvoy outs him as a traitor or whatnot that's working for himself. And he's like, come look, you all have been named as targets. If I didn't do what I did, we'd all be dead. Uh, and then basically a bunch of crazy stuff happens. There's like Matrix style fighting. It's like curved bullets and all this stuff. And then it turns out the loom is always right because everybody dies at the end. All the targets are eliminated. And yeah, everybody's destroyed. So it was kind of like that part was interesting and had a nice circular uh, end to it but in terms of the execution of the film it definitely it needs some help it was fun to watch and I could definitely see a lot of inspiration of like other great movies such as Matrix um, there was definitely like Fight Club in there, like, you know, like American Beauty, like those movies where it's like the guy that lives a mundane life that has an opportunity to be great all of a sudden and sort of rebels against the system because he literally has like an office job like in American Beauty or uh, Fight Club, like, you know, he has that really lame job, then he goes crazy and you know find something greater um and the whole end of the film is like a PSA and he's like what have I done today lately and it's like a call for everybody to like go improve their life or whatever so that was kind of funny uh, it was interesting I had never heard of this film, and it definitely, like I said, it borrows on really great movies. So it, like, has all the workings on, and it's got, like, a twist, too, that, you know, when you execute a twist properly, your movie feels remembered forever. Like, usual suspects. No one will ever forget that movie because of how amazing the twist was. Um... So this movie tries to do a lot of things like that that could make it like the greatest movie of all time. But 
it is it does lack like the build up and the execution and the great direction of these other films like Fight Club or Usual Suspects like in terms of the twist build up um, but I would give it like a 7 Point five or something out of ten. And I, I think that's about what I give it. Oh, sorry, I'm just yawning. Um, it's definitely pretty good. It's definitely there. Um, but let's read some reviews. I got some stuff. Got an eight out of ten. Got a 9 out of 10, got a 7, got a 1, got a 6, got a 6. So I'll look at the distribution of reviews. The, most people gave it a 7. Uh, so, yeah, it's about a 7. 29.5% gave it a 7 out of 10. So I'll start with a 7, I'll move to an 8, and then I'll read a 6. Uh... So this guy titled his review, Not a Bit of Substance, But Who Cares? That's a good way to put it. Okay, so he said, Putting it bluntly, Wanted was a rather formulaic and predictable outing. A loosely office shut-in, oh, a loserly office shut-in with the help of a hot babe, learns about his past, and is suddenly thrust into the world of assassination, a world of flipping cars, extreme gunfights and mind-altering stunts, thus shredding every bit of his shy, weak self. This we've all seen before. You see? He's referencing, like, Fight Club and stuff. Where Wanted stands apart from any other action film is its style. The director has upped the ante on how action is portrayed. Gone are any sort of boundaries where people can flawlessly flip over cars and land perfectly perfectly upright on the other side, where people can shoot miles away and they hit multiple targets standing on different planes with all one shots. If people can really do this, perhaps I'm living the same existence as Wesley, and I'm missing out. The film's major selling point is its style and is worth a viewing simply for that. The A-list cast delivers solid performances, but the script they are given with the exception of the last line uttered is mostly generic. James McAvoy is sympathetic and relatable as the guy who is overwhelmingly bored with his life doesn't know how to change it, something many people understand. His transformation into a tough guy is effortless and convincing. Angelina Jolie is Fox, a name quite fitting as Jolie looks fantastic. Uh, However, we've seen this character on her before. Yeah, that's definitely true. I've seen this, like, uh, you know, like, femme fatale, very attractive Angelina Jolie character many times before. Um, okay, back to the review. Still, she does it well. Morgan Freeman, as usual, in injects intelligence into his role, playing the solemn leader of the fraternity, which is the name of the assassin group. However, for all its edgy extreme events, the film contains oh, oh, sorry, all the edgy events the film contains, the film is hurt by some pieces that are just plain odd and never explained. For one, the fraternity gets its targets from a secret code that is woven into tra tapestries by the Loom of Fate. Sounds like something from a Monty Python sketch. It is never revealed who, if anyone, controls the loom or where it derives its powers. Names are simply revealed in code, and the members of the fraternity don't ask questions. The members are fully human, but seemingly invincible thanks to some sort of special wax bath devised to heal wounds very quickly. It's the film's easy way out that allows them to deliver the goods on all high-octane action they desire. Lastly, the film turns into a very, turns a very predictable corner that we will all see coming from miles away. See, like I said, the, uh, the twist, 
Or no, he's talking about probably the ending where everybody dies. Yeah, the twist is not fully predictable, but like I said, it's not built up enough to be awesome. You know what I'm saying? All right, so the guy ends by saying, when the film ends, you'll realize how simple and ridiculous it is for about 75% of the time, but you won't care. The film makes up for every flaw by smearing the screen with mind-bending stunts, unique filmography, and breathtaking visuals. Yes, Miss Jolie is one of them. Haha, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> It'll be painfully obvious that the simple plot details were just uh, the framework, and the real substance is not in its intricate story, but its execution of the stunts and action. I fully agree. This movie is it's good because of the action... And like the style, which he says a lot. The style is cool. It is. It's cool. It's just cool. And Angelina Jolie is also quite nice. Uh, and Morgan Freeman's cool too. Um, let's do a, a six out of ten, and I'll do a seven out of ten. There's two six out of tens here. Which one should I do? Uh, okay I'll read the shorter one for the first half hour wanted felt like a trailer okay that's that's a pretty good description it's got a lot of like trailery direction adapted from a graphic novel the film never seems to settle the actors seem ill at ease with the material and the impatience on through the director's part leaves us with a messy hackneyed film of action set pieces and sci-fi mumbo jumbo in between the film tries far too hard to be cool which is a shame because i'm sure it could have been a better film if it had just done with a little less haste james mccavoy is so convincing in the last king of scotland it is hard it is hard to like in this role wait what Oh, oh, I, I read it wrong. He's saying that he was convincing in The Last King of Scotland, but he's hard to like in this current role. Morgan Freeman is totally non-interested, but to be fair, he's given virtually nothing to do and serves as a filler between action scenes. Angelina Jolie is the real star of this film. She has outstanding presence as an actress and suits the action genre. It's just a shame we can't find a truly memorable action film for her to star in. In summary, Wanted is fast-paced but legless action film that prompts as much but delivers very little. It leaves you wanting. Okay, the best thing he said was definitely about Angelina Jolie. She is the star of the film, and I do agree. She is definitely, like, she is kind of could be an amazing action star, I feel. But she was never in any great action movies, really. I mean, maybe she was in some pretty good ones or good ones, but she was never... She was never, um, uh, oh my god, <laughs> why can't I, I know this actress's name, but I'm just having a bit of a brain freeze here. She was never, um, Sigourney Weaver from, like, Aliens, who, like, that is her, like, awesome action movie. She's totally fit to be an action star. She's sort of, like, charismatic. She looks good with a gun. She, um, uh, is sort of a bigger, taller woman. She's got some toughness. Angelina Jolie sort of has that, but like more of a femme fatale sort of action hero. Okay, let's read a, a 8 out of 10, because we're running out of time here. Gotta pick a shorter one. Uh, okay, this is a short enough one. 8 out of 10 by Andy. This was a very easy watch action-packed movie delved into your imagination as long as you're not expecting true to life action drama you should love it i'm not normally struck on the matrix style movies but i really like this film the story is not to be taken seriously just go with the flow of the film and watch the stunts and special effects putting angelina jolie and morgan freeman in the movie had to be a good move with the box office bucks but the ace card for this movie, in my opinion, is James McAvoy. He plays the geeky guy who turns into a top assassin. First, I did not recognize James McAvoy from his previous films like The Last King of Scotland and Wimbledon. When I did realize it was the same actor, I understood what a fabulous actor he truly is. 
He portrays the character with absolute ease. His transition from the role from the start of the movie to the end is class. James, I am a true fan. The movie is a good watch if you're into this type of movie. Um, yeah, I think James McAvoy did a good job, but I thought Angelina Jolie was the best. Uh, probably second would be him. He did he did do a good job selling it. Uh, what else does this guy say here? Yeah, he says like go with the flow. That is great advice for watching this movie because it's it's very different. You do have to like go with the flow or you'll get left in the dust. So that sounds really cheesy. <laughs> but yeah, that's been basically my review of Wanted here. Um but yeah. Uh I would give it a 7 out of 10. We're basically at the end of the show, so I'm going to do some wrap-up. Uh, at the beginning of the show, first 30 minutes, I talked about Thelma and Louise, which is a very good movie. I highly recommend it. Uh, it's a great road trip movie, great American movie. It's got some adventure. It's got some action. It's funny. Great actors. Um, very likable characters. Really nice direction. Highly recommend Wanted, I would say, uh, it's not, it's not a must see, definitely. But if you're looking for like sort of a unique action movie in terms of the actual action, then yeah, it, it's 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 pretty good. Uh, if you've seen The Matrix or and you love it, you should see this movie because it's definitely kind of like a spin off of The Matrix in terms of the action style. Um. But yeah, that's been my two reviews on KUCI 88.9 Irvine. This has been Cine Show with Nima Golubai. I'm with you to the end of the line. Thank you.